Good morning. Today, we are going to be working on ionization and uh, the net ionic equations, which you don't know what that is yet, but um, we're starting that. Remember that ionization is the ability for um, a compound to break apart into its ions in solution. So let's review what we did last class in terms of what happens with this term ionization. So very quickly, what does ionization mean, ladies and gentlemen? Fantastic. So again, ionization is a compound's ability to break apart in a solution to form ions. And remember, what is an ion? Yep, an ion is a charged particle, something like calcium two plus or oxygen two minus or chlorine minus, all of those are ions. So let's just take a quick look. The question is, are the following sol compounds soluble or insoluble in water? Well, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna bust out this solubility of common ions. And remember, an ion is a charged particle, like a plus or a minus. You can see those things there. So you're gonna want this chart because this is gonna teach you what, or it's gonna show you what is soluble. And remember, soluble means to ionize, to turn into an ion, to break apart. That also is disassociate. You're gonna take your hands and you're gonna make your hands move apart because moving your hands apart means, okay, we have our compound right here and then the compound breaks apart in solution. So all of those things are gonna be soluble. So let's take a look at this first one. The first one is FeNO3. Now, first, Generally speaking, we want to find the negatively charged particles on this chart, these anions, because the anions are going to help determine what is going to, um, what's going to be soluble or insoluble. So let's go down, and for this one, let's find nitrate. And here's NO3 right here. Notice this chart tells you that it's a minus charge, so NO3 minus. And then we're working with iron. Now, we want to determine, are we going to move that direction, or are we going to move in that direction. If we move this way, the compound will be soluble. If we move in this direction, the compound will be insoluble. All we have to do is figure out if this iron right here is inside this box, is the iron found right here, or is the iron found over here? So let's look. No cations exist in this box, which means no charged particles exist. So iron cannot be in there because there's no cations, which means iron must be in this box that says all cations. Which iron are we talking about? Remember, nitrate has a three minus charge. So in theory, we would have NO3 minus, NO3 minus, NO3 minus. So this side over here is a minus three means that this side over here must be a plus three. And since there's only one iron, that must be an Fe3 plus. So that would be an Fe3 plus. It's inside this box. If we're in this box, this is the soluble side. We'd move across in that direction. We'd be soluble. And so we'd write down here, soluble. That's what soluble means. Let's change the color up, huh? So let's take a look at this next one. The next one we're working with is this copper with this hydroxide. Which copper? Well, hydroxide is right over here, right? There's hydroxide. You can see hydroxide has a minus one charge and there's two of these hydroxides. So you have one hydroxide here and another hydroxide, which means we cut this thing in half just to separate the charges. We have two negative charges over here. A negative and a negative is gonna be a negative two. And then that puts means this side must be a plus two and there's only one copper, so that must be a copper with a two plus charge. So let's find out where is the copper with the two plus charge. It says most cations are in this box. So let's look over here and see if we can find Cu2 plus. Nope, let's see. NH4 plus is not Cu2 plus. Calcium 2 plus is not Cu2 plus. Barium 2 plus is not Cu2 plus. And strontium is not Cu2 plus. But it says 
Group one is also in this box. What does group one mean? Group one means we're gonna go to the periodic table. Oops, I'm gonna have to get rid of that one there. We go to the periodic table and we wanna find group number one. It just so happens that group number one is right here, okay? So this is group number one. This column, believe it or not, is gonna be group two, et cetera. But this is group or column number one. So is copper in this column? It's not francium, cesium, rubidium, potassium, sodium, lithium, hydrogen. Nope, copper's not in that column. Copper's way over there. So let's go back to our other, our other sheet because now we know that copper is not a group one, right? Copper is not a group one. Cross that out, which means copper must be in this box here. If it's in that box, we're gonna be over here on the insoluble side. So this copper hydroxide must be insoluble. Let's take a look at the next one. Let's make it green. This one we're working with sodium and carbonate. So let's go down and find carbonate. There's carbonate. And to be insoluble or to stay together, right? Insoluble. Most things will be insoluble. Most things are going to form a compound. But let's see if sodium is in this box. Is sodium NH4 plus? Nope. Is sodium a group one? I don't know, Mr. P. Let's go back and look. All right, let's go look. Let's see if sodium is over here in group one. Now we're working in green. Let's see. Sodium is not hydrogen. Sodium is not lithium, but whoa, mama, there it is. Sodium is right there. So looks like sodium is a group one. So sodium is going to be here. Ding, 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 ding. We got it. So that means we're going to come in this direction and we're going to have a soluble compound. So sodium carbonate is going to be soluble. And if you want me to show you a trick, I'm going to take out a special color. I don't know what color it's going to be, but we'll make it this brown color. There's a section here that says cations. And if you look here, group one, all group ones are always going to be soluble, always, with everything. And ammonia will always be soluble. So anything with sodium is automatically soluble. If I write ammonium, I guess, yeah, I guess I have to put parentheses around it. Ammonium phosphide, boom automatically. Mr. P, but phosphide's not here. I know, but ammonium is, and ammonium, this NH4 plus, is soluble with everything. That's one of the ways that we can put stuff into solution to make ions. All right, so let us move on, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've gotten everything so far. We're going to come into this next section. So we're going to kind of do a little review of what we did last class. But what I want to do is talk to you about this special word, okay? A little review of our special word, aqueous. What does aqueous mean? Aqueous means, right, that things will dissolve in water. And so ionic compounds, ionic being like plus charge, remember an ion is a charge particle, so like sodium chloride is an ionic compound, okay? If it has an AQ, that automatically means it breaks apart. It's going to dissociate. So if I ever write a compound like this that says aqueous, automatically we're working with soluble because soluble is aqueous. And I had a student say to me, Mr. Pepe, why don't you put the word aqueous in here? And I said, brilliant idea. And so I'm going to change this handout and put the word aqueous over here as well. But let's take a look and let's go through what we did um, last class as a review. So first thing we need to do we want to take AgNO3 and break it apart. Well, do we know the charge on NO3? Do we know the charge on NO3? Oopsies. Do we know the charge on NO3? Yes, we do. The charge on NO3 is minus. So the NO3 is going to be NO3 minus. And since the charge is half the balance, that must be an Ag plus. So what then I would need to do, well, I'll just put it, well, what you would have to do, and I'll just show you what you're going to do. You're going to double click on that box just like you did last time 
and you'll come in here and we will write in um, the, the silver and the nitrate so that when I get your homework, I'll see that you know that silver is a plus one charge and nitrates a minus three charge. But for now, I'm just gonna work these out with you right now. So let's take a look. So this one, we have nickel and bromine, okay? It's aqueous, which means this is gonna break apart. Lucky for us, we know the charge on bromine is a negative charge. So we're gonna have three of those in solution. There's one, there's two, there's three. There's our three bromides, right, or bromines. And they're gonna have negative charge, which means this whole side over here, we break this in half, this whole side is gonna be a negative three side with the three individual bromines, which means this side over here must be a positive three. There's only one nickel. So the nickel is gonna go into water. And remember, however many minus charges we have, we have to have the same number of plus charges so they equally cancel each other out. So this would what the solution would look like. You'd have one nickel ion, a nickel three ion, and three bromides. All right, let's move on. Let's try another one. Let's take a look at this sodium and this carbonate. All right, so do we know the charge on sodium? Yes, we do. It's right here. It's a plus one charge. We also know that it's a plus one charge because it's in the first column, right? Everything in the first column, ladies and gentlemen, has a plus one charge. And there's sodium right there must be a plus one charge. So here we go. We're gonna write down sodium. And how many sodiums do we have? We have two, but these break apart. So you're gonna end up with two individual sodiums. And then you've got one carbonate. Now, some people have been writing CO three times. They'll write CO, CO, CO. This is wrong. There's one, and you can see it, you can find these things around. There's one CO three, and there's a two minus charge on it so that the two pluses are canceled by the two minus. And it's gonna work like that every single time. So let's take a look at this last one. We've got an iron and a sulfate. It says aqueous, which means that if we go to sulfate right here, we know we're gonna move in this direction. I don't even have to come to my chart because it says aqueous. And look, is the iron over here? That's not iron. No, 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 nope. Iron is not in that box, which means iron is in this box. Well, which iron are we working with? Remember, iron is a transitional metal. Iron is right here. There's our transitional, which means we don't know what the charge is. We know all of those are plus ones, plus twos, plus threes, minus ones, minus twos, minus threes, minus fours, or plus fours, but minus fours for now. But these in here, we don't know what their charge is. Remember, they're transitional. They can have whatever charge they need to have to fit the situation. And so what we need to do, we need to find out what the charge is. So let's go find out what the charge is. Let me delete that really fast. Get rid of those lines. So let's take a look. Sulfate. There are three sulfates. Each sulfate has a minus two charge. There's one sulfate, SO4, two minus. There's our second sulfate, SO4, two minus. There's our third sulfate, SO4, two minus, floating around in solution. You can see right here, we have two irons. There's one iron, there's two irons. But what's the charge? What's the charge on those irons? Good, if you got it correct, I really hope you did. Let's take a look, let me help you. This whole side over here, ladies and gentlemen, must be a minus six, two, four, six, which means this side must be a plus six, but there's two irons. So how much does each iron have? Each iron's gonna be a three plus charge. So good stuff, this is how it worked. This would be the picture that you draw, only you're gonna wanna look like this. You're gonna type it in. I put the text box in there forever and everything so that you can work it out relatively easily, all right? so. You're gonna to have to do that now. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start this thing called net ionic equations. Net ionic equations um, are gonna be when we have to figure out what is going to react in a solution. What's gonna react in a solution? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a solution. And inside that solution, I'm gonna tell you, hey, look, you're gonna have an Na plus, a Cl minus, a nitrate, and a silver ion, right? And you're gonna to have to take those and figure out which of those are gonna react. It's just 
working and figuring stuff out. Now, if you ever see sodium in here, does anything ever react with sodium? Nope, no things react with sodium. If you ever see nitrate, does anything react with nitrate? Nothing reacts, nothing will be insoluble. Everything will always be floating around in solution, right? So the sodium and the nitrate, we're trying to figure out what will react. Will the sodium react with the chloride? Well, there's the chloride. Nope, sodium's not there. So the sodium doesn't react with the chloride. That's a plus charge and a plus charge. Those don't react. Sodium and nitrate, none of those react with anything. So we can pretty much just get rid of those two and say, nope, those aren't gonna react. But let's take a look. Will the silver react with the chloride? So here's our chloride. And let's see if the silver and the chloride react. AG, yep, there's the silver right there. So this will be insoluble and you, they're, they're all gonna be insoluble just so you know. And then you're gonna write out what's insoluble about it. And you would write out, where am I? There I am. You would write out AG and you'd put a plus sign on it, right? Plus, and we always put the plus, the, the positive one first, even though the chloride looks like it's over here, we always put the plus ones first, plus Cl minus is gonna yield. Now to yield, let me show you what I do to make the yield sign. So to yield, ladies and gentlemen, oh my God, this is so cool. To yield, where's my finger? Here's my finger. I'm gonna push this dash button for me. It's right next to the plus key, all right? Can you guys see that? So right here, I'm gonna push it twice. It's gonna, it's gonna look like that right there. It's gonna put those two pluses, although I guess you can see the screen. And then I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna push this little arrow button right here. Push the arrow to the right. Whoops, I need to push the space bar. So I'm gonna push shift, not space, shift, arrow. And then my screen will look like that. And then if I push the space bar one time, it turns into that beautiful little yield arrow. It's gonna be two dashes and that little arrow key, and that'll make your yields. And then you can type in the rest. It's gonna form A, G, C, L. Boom, done. Now I'll let you know on every one of these, there will always be um, a compound. You just have to figure out what's the compound gonna be that reacts, all right? So let's take a look at this next one. So we're gonna have this PB2 plus, it's called lead two. We have the sodium, we have nitrate, and we have sulfate. So let's see which one of those reacts together, shall we? So let's just take a look. Nitrate, all right? Here's nitrate. And since it's a negative, the only possibilities for nitrate are sodium and the lead. And let's see, no cations react. All cations are soluble. So the nitrate's gonna stay apart. It's gonna keep dancing. It is not gonna find love. So nitrate is not gonna react or get together with anything. Let's take a look at the lead. Well, lead is all over the place. So we'll have to find the lead down here with sulfate. Let's find sulfate. So there's our sulfate. We just have to go through each one and see who reacts. Let's see, is lead over here? No, that's not lead. That's not lead. Whoa, there it is. There's our lead too, which means sulfate and lead will form an insoluble compound and react. So these two, I don't think I did that with the last one, but I usually draw something like this. I'll draw it around. And then the sodium, sodium doesn't do anything. It's always soluble. So the sodium doesn't react. So now we can sit here and say, okay, let's draw this thing out. We'll have PB, whoopsie daisy, it's pretty, pretty bold. We'll have PB, still pretty big, and I'll do my plus sign, right? So I push the shift and the two plus sign. And then I'm gonna bring her on down. I might run out of room here. Plus, I'm gonna run out of room. Let me shrink this bad boy down a little bit. That's at 34. There we go. Then we come here and we have PB plus sulfates. We're gonna SO, subscript, superscript, two, oopsies, superscript, oops, control. Superscript two minus, right? And then to do my arrow key is gonna be dash dash with that little right arrow space bar. And then I can make my compound PB S O four because a two plus and a two minus. And this would be the compound that gets made. This would be our completed product. All right, so hopefully you guys are seeing that. I'll do one more example 
just so you can get the, the, the feel for it. Let's take a look at this one here. All right. So here we go. We have, um, we have iron three plus nitrate hydroxide and potassium. So let's take a look. Let's uh, start with the nitrate. There's nitrate. Let's see, will anything react to form an insoluble compound? Nope, everything's over here, which means the potassium and the iron three plus are in that box. Nope, nitrate does not react, okay? So the nitrate doesn't react. Let's take a look at the hydroxide. Let's come down here. There's hydroxide. Let's see if Fe, well, let's look at potassium. Let's see if potassium is going to form an insoluble compound. Let's see, is that potassium, potassium, potassium? But potassium is a group one, right? And since, but oops, since potassium is a group one, then that would be a soluble compound as well, right? So let's, that's not going to work. That means potassium is in there. Well, that means is iron in this container here? Fe3 plus? Nope. That means that Fe3 plus is over here. This will form an insoluble compound and we'll write our insoluble compound. So that's what reacts. Remember to make an insoluble compound usually means that things, those things are gonna react together in solution, which is why they're so important to us. What are we at, 18? All right, perfect. So let's write it out. We would write F, whoopsies. We'd write Fe, whoopsies, that shift lock, yep, Fe. And then we would three plus it. So we'll always put the cations or the positive ones first, and then we'll go plus, and then we'll say hydroxide. Whoops, hydroxide. And then we'll drop back down here, dot, or we're not dot, dot, but dash, dash, arrow, yields, Fe. Now, if you take a look, we have a three plus on this side and a minus on that side, which means we're gonna need three of these. So we're gonna write, OH with a little subscript three down there. And that would wrap up our assignment. Oh, you know what I didn't put? You'll put a little S there for solid, right? Because those are solids now. And you do that on these too. I didn't do it. I so apologize. All right. So it'd be AGCL subscript solid. Okay. So that's what that little S means. So that would be um, our assignment for today, kids. Hopefully everything's making sense. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be sitting right here to help you out. But I'm hoping you understand that you're going to use this common chart, right, um, to solve all your problems. So, whoopsies. So this chart over here, right, this chart you're going to use to, um, to figure things out. Mr. P, where do you get those charts? Remember, you're going to go to Mr. Pepic's homepage, click on chemistry resources, and then you'll click on the solubility chart. This will come up. If you come to my classroom, I'll print it out for you and give it to you. You can have it forever. If you're at home, you can print it out or just it's available on your computer. It's sitting right there. So hopefully all of this made sense. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day. Again, um, we are just starting net ionic equations. We will do a lab next class. I'm so excited. All right. So um, that's it. Have a very good day, ladies and gentlemen.